So last time we had a little talk about Overwatch. Uh, Overwatch 2, we talked about um, like the armor system and, and the things that would change. Uh, primarily it would be like the, like the concept of when Overwatch 2 was being shown, supports healed like 15 or 20% less during combat. Uh, and they did this just to show, like, not to show, but to be like, all right, how much do we have to nerf healing across the board for it to feel good? Um, and I was like, instead of get, just nerfing healing and getting rid of this thing they already have pre-programmed, I was like, why don't you give this thing as a feature and apply it to different uh, abilities and stuff like that for it to be used as a debuff, essentially. Um, and it can be used on anything and mainly you you know target off meta stuff i i really like looking at explosion damage um just start applying this in a wide area and start giving more supports uh cleanses and stuff like that just to add more variety to the game and also to encourage like hero diversity right if they run two hit scans without any anti-heal then they're gonna have a lot harder time killing targets than they are if you know, they have uh, an explosion-based hero that can anti-heal a guy and, um, you know, deal damage on top of it. And by anti-heal, I don't mean, like, Ana's, where it's actually 0% healing. Um, I think it should just be that 20 or 30% reduced healing. Attach that to explosion damage, and we can apply it to different things. Even things that don't do explosion damage, you can still apply it to it. Um. So I'll probably post that. I'll chop that video up and post that on YouTube first so that I can add this one next. But understanding that context is really important. But for Overwatch 2 and from what Blizzard has talked about and from what we're seeing so far and, you know, it's soon to come out to a beta, at least to Overwatch League players. Um, I think the entire idea of a main tank should be gone. At least the hardcore version of it. Um... Like I say here in my notes, I'm like, it's not very interesting or entertaining for players in an FPS to sit there and hold a position um, or hold a button, right? It's not really fun to shoot the shield, and it's not really fun to hold the shield up or be dependent on keeping the shield up. No one really enjoys that. I can understand if there's distance you need to close, but maybe we can figure out a different way to do that rather than just saying, hey, no one takes damage until we get there. Um there's different ways to do it, and I think shields aren't the way to go. That being said, um, tanking, I think, in Overwatch 2 should really go... And, and I don't think main tank should be gone completely. I think Reinhardt is what we're going to see as the closest thing to a main tank as we think right now. Like, if you have a spectrum from, like, main tank to off tank, um, Reinhardt's going to be over here as, like, the hardest idea of a main tank. But even then, we're going to take this whole paradigm and just go, whoop, and move everything more towards off-tanking or dealing damage. Basically, playing like Hammond is the easiest way or the most visceral way of, of explaining it to Overwatch people right now. And that's why I say, you know, tanks should be used to physically push and bully players back, but lack easily accessible burst damage. Uh, shields should only be used to allow the team to move forward from cover to cover and not push the entire way uh, to a point while it's up. This whole physically push and bully people, we really have that, right? That's, I mean, really, that's a majority of the off tanks. That's how D.Va works. She's literally, like, an internet bully. Hog is, like, the bully you meet at school, right? It's just these physical bullies that'll just push you back. Um, Hammond has this as well. I'm just going to say Sigma and Orisa, while they lack the physical ability to push you back, they have phenomenal mid-range damage. Um, enough to push you back because they're just dealing so much goddamn damage. And you can't kill them because they got shields and, and personal defense uh, devices. Uh, Winston's entire route, yeah, Jack, but also Winston as a whole kind of does that. He leaps at people, he's going to land on them. People don't want to get landed on, so they kind of back up and he buys them space, he throws on a shield, and then there's the whole, you know, shield dance with, with, um, with Winston.
But I do believe tanks still need that conditional burst damage that I've discussed in length before. Conditional burst damage is really needed to make feel make tanks feel like they have a significant impact. Um, it comes in all forms. You get Hog's Hook and, you know, his shot. Zarya with high burst damage. Winston and Reinhardt with Cleave. Winston also gets it from his ultimate. I would consider his ultimate knocking someone environmental death would be conditional burst damage. Reinhardt gets it with this charge. Right, there's all these things where there are specific conditions and tanks can do a shit ton of damage. That That is very important as a design mechanic for a hero, especially as a, as a tank class that needs it. Because it's an FPS, we need that high impact stuff. The entire idea of an MMO or MOBA tank does not work in an FPS. We can't have super tanky things that have just all utility or slows or stuns or anything like that. It just sucks to play um, at least for an, from an fps point of view in other points of view i think it works so definitely what i think tanks need debuffs last for 30 percent uh shorter they're 30 percent weaker 30 percent less 30 uh you know they give off 30 percent less alt charge and also knock back I, I just wanted to say hey control 30 percent less across the board um, uh, they're just targets for everything. And because they're so limited, and I know I say limited on mobility, when people are like D.Va and Winston, not really limited. Essentially, if you push them off a uh, high ground as soon as they use their ability, and maybe that could be counterplay, like they are kind of just sit there doing, doing fucking nothing. And in Overwatch, doing nothing for two to three seconds is death, even with 600 damage, or 600 health. So, just give them, give them resistance to everything. As for how I would rework the heroes, um, so I kind of want to approach the hero talk a little bit differently. I kind of want to talk, where do I see the hero? Uh, just like, what should their job be? Thematically, what is the hero's thing? Are they on theme? Now, the theme isn't that important, but it does... It It's not important, and it is important. Um, so I'll go over that. And basically what I like to look at is, do they have something for short, medium, and long range? Um, and by having something, tanks all have something, which is health. While they may not be able to kill long range heroes, they can just damage mitigate them forever, more or less. If it was a one-on-one, -on -one, let's say. Um, they have enough health just to break line of sight and kind of chill and just be, be fine elsewhere. Uh, they can find different, usually... They can usually find different routes around the map to, you know, do what they need to do. So for D.Va. Um, D.Va, I really see her as like, I know it sounds stupid, but internet bully. Um, I, I think it's really important for D.Va to get in people's faces. To push them back. She's like a high-tech version of Hog. Uh, is the best way to really put it. I, I see her as a digital bully and I see Hog as an analog bully. Um, so that feeling of constant pressure, constant in your face, uh, feeling a little bit overwhelmed, I think those are the things that need to be with the hero. Um, also for mid, medium, and long range, or short, medium, and long range, again, inherently all tanks have health so they can mitigate it that way. Uh, we're going to make some modifications to the defensive matrix, but that should still work at any range because uh, it protects her. Uh, short range, she has some of the highest deeps in the game. Um, I, I think it's like... I, uh, what, I think it's like around 150 to 160. Most DPS heroes have about 120 DPS without headshots. So she's... She's looking like 30, 30, 40% stronger than most DPS heroes, deep, uh, DPS wise. So, the first things I want to do to D.Va rework her health, remove her hitbox, or headshot, <laughs> hitbox, remove her headshot. Uh, I think burst damage in Overwatch, when including headshots, it's too high 
but I think how headshots work for DPS against DPS heroes works fairly well, and DPS against supports works fairly well. It's DPS against tanks, where tanks are like, oh, I'm doing okay, and then all of a sudden, bam, 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 they're just dead. So, in D.Va's case, I want to give her more armor, and again, remember my iteration of armor, armor is stronger, and also the armor formula has been reworked, so it stops more damage for headshots. Um, if people didn't watch my previous video, basically, right now, armor reduces damage at the end. So, you do 70 damage, headshot 140, reduce it by 5. I want armor to block 10, but I also want to block it beforehand. So you hit someone, headshot for 70 damage, damage gets reduced to 60, and then gets doubled to 120. That's what I want armor to be. Um, and this will hurt, I say hurt, this will allow tanks or anyone with armor to navigate against hitscan heroes much, much easier. Uh, so with this, D.Va can, really without a headshot box... And with increased armor, she can actually sit in the fray a bit longer. Uh, now, what I want done with her defensive matrix, I, everyone, it's, it's a nerf, but I don't see a game where someone can deny infinite amount of damage, and they're looking to buff defensive matrix, by the way, to like three seconds or four seconds total. I, I don't see a game where that exists. I don't see that as a fun mechanic to play against, and I don't see it as a fun mechanic to play with. It It's just ridiculous. It it, it covers her entire... It, it I swear it's like 135 degree head to toe for 10 meters. Um, it's, it's insane. Uh... I, I don't like Defensive Matrix. It's not about D.Va. I just don't like Defensive Matrix as an ability. What I think Defensive Matrix could be done is it's basically a single-click ability. It activates for a quarter of a second, downtime three seconds, maybe even four seconds. Um, it can be done anytime. There's no, like, oh, she's shooting or, or you know using another ability. It can be done anytime. Uh, make it back to 15 meters. So... What I want Defensive Matrix to be is I, one of the other things that D.Va is, is, you know, she's a pro gamer. And I really want her to have some, essentially, skill shots. I see Defensive Matrix as shutting down abilities that she can skillfully deal with. So I don't want it to be like, oh, deny all damage, let's run through a choke point. I, I think that's a really shit way to have the ability. What I think it is, is like, oh, I'm fighting with people, they're going to use an ability, let me outplay them, bam, stop that ability. Um, that's what I really want Defensive Matrix to, to turn into. Now, with the removal of her headshot box and the increase in armor, this kind of... I can't say it makes up for blocking infinite damage, but it allows her to, to live a, a significant amount of time. Now, the big change that I want to make to D.Va is with Micro Missiles. So, I think Micro Missiles, especially with my... <laughs> yeah, if you need to swear, just say poopsie whoopsie instead of shit. With Micro Missiles, what I really see it as... Remember, we gave Explosion Damage uh, Anti-Heal, so minus 30% healing. We make micro missiles like defensive matrix is now, where you start using it and you know the the bar goes down. So I want her to be able to freely use micro missiles a lot better. Uh, we will increase the overall damage, I believe. No, the damage stays the same, uh, but it has a lot higher of an AOE. So. Obviously, what I'm saying with this change is, is all right, Diva's going to be really good at putting out anti-heal. It consumes ammo from the energy bar, just like Defensive Matrix is now. Uh, the button must be pressed and held, can stop at any time. Uh, one bar is always full and is identical to its time used today. So I think I think micro missiles last for two seconds. But imagine one bar is two seconds. You use it, goes down, refills back up, just like Defensive Matrix does now. 
Um, but I want there to be a second bar, and also her missile increases as she takes damage. And this is where her tankiness kind of comes into play. Uh, essentially, if people are constantly hitting her with damage, more or less she's going to have constant micro-missiles. And the idea is, is just to be extremely oppressive if she's taking damage. Um, and this doesn't muck around with her DPS, because if you made micro-missiles deal more damage, she's just fucking bursting down heroes from nothing. Uh, so I didn't want to increase the damage, I just want her to be... A... She's anti-fun, right? She's just a big wet blanket. That's what we're going to make her. Um, also, micro-missiles no longer goes towards the center of the screen. So right now, the micro-missiles come out like this. But they're pointed, so they hit a target right there. Um, I don't want that. I want micro-missiles to go like this. So that the smaller targets can only get hit by one side. And larger targets get hit by both sides. Uh, I just like this to reduce her burst damage against smaller heroes when her shotgun primary fire is... One of the highest DPSs in the game. So this is basically what I would do to rework D.Va and see how it goes in the future. Uh, there is one, one change. I think people are going to hate this. But... So Mini D.Va... Um... So Mini Diva is a the whole delay tactic with killing Diva is is rough for Divas. So I think her her pistol damage needs to go down, so she's not as lethal. Her projectile size goes down, so she needs to be a little bit more skillful with her shots. Right now, for people that don't know, Diva and Mercy's uh, pistol a larger hitbox than Junkrat's grenade. Uh, Junkrat's grenades 0.2. These are 0.25. Uh, pistol is a beam projectile, so it can't be deflected or absorbed. Um, <laughs> and damage no longer charges her alt. I, I, by, by that, I mean headshots don't charge her faster. But every single shot she lands steals 5% of the opponent's alt charge. Uh, her, she stops stealing alt charge once her alt is full, so she can't like you can't abuse and steal everyone's alt. Essentially, with making divas call mech kill people, it kind of stops people from, like, kind of stalling her a little bit. But not really. Like, you can still stall her fairly well. With this, you don't fuck around with that. You can't, def you can't deflect her shots. You can't absorb her shots. You can block it with a shield, but that's it. Um, and she starts stealing alts percentages from your teammates. I thought, like, oh, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. May allow people to go into the negative with alt charge, but uh, I, it was like, it's like, if everyone uses their alt, you can still stall her. It doesn't solve the problem perfectly, but I think it's a, definitely a damn fine place to start. Because uh, if you start stalling a diva, holy shit, would your team get fucking pissed when she starts stealing your support alts for the next fight? Uh, Jack, yes, would you not change defensive matrix to have a narrow cone or a dead zone? No, like, I, I want it to be, f like, I, I don't mind its size with this change. Uh, if they allow, if, if Blizzard goes through and they make Defensive Matrix 3 to 4 seconds, then yes, they need to narrow it to, like, 90%. I sh how about, let me put, to 10% of its current size. Like, the cursor has to be on it and the button pressed for D.Va to absorb it. If someone's shooting at her legs and she's not aiming down or aiming right at the gun that it's coming from, it shouldn't absorb it. Um, it's just... it's. Just, I, I just hate the ability as a whole. I, I don't care about the hero. Uh, that ability cannot exist for the game to be that entertaining. And I know people will be like, oh, but swap to a different hero. No. That entire idea, the whole swap mentality is gone in Overwatch 2. At least in my conceptual uh, nature of it. Uh, and this was just my like my little overall notes with there. I was like, the idea is to make D.Va into a face tank with an ability to absorb other abilities and ultimates. 
By losing her crit box and increasing armor, including armor efficiency, she can now face tank when doing, uh, and when doing so extends the time of her missiles. This allows her to keep up pressure on the enemy, keep the healing beat debuff while she pressures them, uh, without increasing her short-term DPS. It's also known that players will have a hard time holding both buttons to shoot and missiles constantly. That fits her needing of a high APM lore. Uh, I know it sounds stupid to have lore, but I, I think it is a kind of a funny aspect where you're like, how the fuck am I supposed to hold two different buttons down and constantly doing all these other things? I'm like, oh, that makes sense for a StarCraft bro. Uh, and the mini diva change officially removes diva staggering as an option. While she's much less lethal, she now steals enemy all charge, which could be far, far worse. So that's what I would do for D.Va. Now for Arisa. I think Arisa's theme could be one of the most wasted things in all of gaming. Uh, I'm sure there's other examples of, uh, of ideas that have been wasted. But the Aris is a fucking centaur. Like centaurs are known for their mobility, and they're known like lore, like just fantasy centaurs, usually known for their mobility, usually known for archery, shit like that. Hit and runs is what they're known for, and so they took a centaur. And, like, even horses, like, what the fuck? Horses aren't known for just, like, manning up and fighting something. Like, they're fucking quick. Uh, so I think it's really dumb to have this horse or centaur-based hero and just be like, no, they did they, they, they sit there and they're a bull, right? Bulls don't run. And you may know of a, a Span. I think it's a Spanish thing, the running of the bulls. Crazy. They run there. Also... Bulls are pretty goddamn quick, from what I know. Uh, if you think bulls are slow, I tempt you to jump a uh, farmer's fence and, you know, if there's a, an active bull there and, and see how fast it is compared to you. They're, they're pretty goddamn fast. So the whole lore of Orisa, I'm just not a fan of. And I think just as a main tank, she just doesn't work. We're moving away from main tanks. Fucking great. So... We're actually going to make her a little bit more mobile. Uh, again, tanks, short, medium, long range. Short and mid range. Orisa has phenomenal DPS. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. She has amazing DPS. It, her and Sigma have some of the best mid range pressure in the game. So I'm not too wor much worried about that. And in fact, we're going to buff it a little bit. But the first changes I'd make to Orisa. I don't like how her spread angle works right now. Uh, currently, her gun shoots like a predator right there. Uh, like it's a triangle, right? But all the dots, they converge on a single spot. This allows her to pressure long range better. And I believe it gives her, would technically give her a little bit less accuracy at close range. Um... Technically, yes. She's she's with the changes. What I'm saying are they would be, um, I guess, should be a bit more accurate percentage wise because you have a larger area to hit. But basically, I I want the spread angle to remove, and I just want the shots to shoot straight. Remember how with um, Diva I said missiles shouldn't go towards something; they should just go straight. That's what I want with Arisa's gun. Everything shouldn't shoot straight, converge into a single line. It should just be a triangle pattern that goes straight out. This makes her a little bit less viable against long-range heroes, which is fine. But she's basically covering a larger area at closer ranges. So I'm, a fi I I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, in fact, I think I, I wrote this backwards. Lowers close-range DPS. Increases long. I don't think that's how it would actually work out. But I think Arisa shouldn't have a movement penalty. Again... Horses are supposed to be fucking nimble creatures, guys. So, remove that. And also, completely remove the backwards speed penalty. Um, if you don't know 
whenever you're moving backwards in Overwatch, all heroes are reduced by 10%. Um, you're at a 5.5 movement speed, so you're at point, you're, you're moving, what, point, uh, 4.95? You'd be, you know, losing 0.55. I guess that excludes Tracer and Genji who move faster than everyone else. But you get the idea. Uh, I don't think, again, she's supposed to be a mobile concept. Now, not much vertical mobility. Horses aren't known for being able to fly or anything like that. So I want her to be very quick on the flanks, essentially. She went side to side movement very quick. I want her shield changed a bit. What up, Squid Squad? Welcome to the stream. Uh, shield can be used anytime, does not interrupt. They made that change recently. I think I think there's a couple things that interrupt it, but shield comes out of left hand, everything else she does with the right hand. No reason that you can't do both. Uh, shield width increased 25%. It's no longer shaped like a soccer net, but it's more angled and doesn't cover the sides. Um, I don't like a... Re so... I don't like a lot of tanks right now, how a lot of their shields are curved to protect against flanking. Tanks should be weak against flanking. That should be one of their natural weaknesses. So instead of having a soccer net that's you know, shaped like this, I want it to be a sharp angle that's kind of shaped like this. Uh, it provides less cover on the flanks, but will be a little bit wider. Uh, shield HP is down, cooldown is down a little bit as well. So the idea is a little bit more of a churn and burn type shield uh, that covers a very wide distance. Uh, and, you know, she's weaker on, quote unquote, from the flanks. Slow removed on pull. I don't know why the fuck slow or her pull slows, but holy shit, it's... It, I see Orisa's halt as area denial. It shouldn't confirm a kill. It shouldn't do any of that stuff. What it should do is say, oh, all you guys are sitting here. I'm going to pull you a direction from there. Uh, I don't believe she should be able to slow and net her more damage. Uh, with her extra speed, she, or not even extra speed, with her no longer reduced speed, she should be able to deal with people. So... Here's the thing that people may get a little bit weird off. I don't want her to have Fortify. I want her to have a dash skill. I don't know what you would call it, but it's essentially, it's a lot like Reinhardt's. Um, it's an 8 second cooldown. She gets 25% damage reduction, no headshots. Lasts for 4.5 seconds in uh, total. She can pass through. Yeah, I think I wanted to allow her to pass through characters. Uh, movement speed is increased by 1.5 per second by 70% uh, of the direction you're moving in. Blink, but cannot turn well like charge. It would be like having tank controls. She could Bob's knockup. I don't want that. What I want this to be, what I picture Orisa becoming, is like a horse or a centaur. She's going to be cavalry archer is the best way to put it. You have a wider shield to cover the, the main route. And she dashes from flank to flank. And because it's like Reinhardt, where she has tank, she's stuck going one direction. What you do is, but she's not locked with her camera. So you can dash this way, but shoot that way. Right? Because that's the whole point of a cavalry archer is you can essentially circle someone while shooting them. Um, that's really what I want her to become, uh, is essentially lose the main tank. She provides some damage mitigation, not a lot, but she definitely wants to be on the flank and dashing through the center in a safe manner to get to the other side to help her teammates on the flank. And I, I think a lot of people are like, I, I think this idea isn't that good, yada, yada, yada. And what I really want what I how I really see this shining is when some Overwatch League player, even good players in the ladder, imagine them dashing and navigating the map without looking at it while putting pressure on someone the other way. Right? I think that would be pretty freaking amazing to see. Um, and this would allow for that. Let's 
funny that this turned out this way. But essentially, what I want for bongos is actually the opposite of what Lemon Kiwi did for the most recent uh, experimental card. Um, actually, I want bongos to stand or back. They can still be damaged, so you can still skill shot them off. Um, damage buff down to 35%, but now increases speed by 20% and removes any speed reduction of any type, meaning walking backwards, may slow, anything like that. Uh... I want her to be able to dash around and allow people to dash with her. Not like not the actual skill, but to move with her, allow her to hit from multiple sides. I really want her to be a flank tank, is the best way to put it. Uh, like I said, I think main tanks are really, it, it shouldn't exist. Reinhardt's a good forward tank. Diva's a good like forward tank, but bully. Hog does that as well. We really lack a more anchor style tank for the flanks, and I believe that role would be covered by this. That that's where I see this go. And then I think I these are just my my overall notes. And I was like, I think the idea of a centaur that's not based on mobility is really dumb. Her design should be like a cavalry archer and not a mobile object. The shield is wide to cover the area between the flanks as she'll last through with damage reduction lasting slightly after, giving her specific downtimes and cooldowns uh, as cooldowns come back. So yeah, so the idea of like she dashes across the midfield <coughs> and I I added like that extra half a second or a second to her damage reduction so that when she gets to the flank and she's there, she can sit there and fight someone for a little bit of time with damage reduction and to give her the edge overall. Uh, bongos will now not give an insane amount of damage or you're forced to disengage, but can be played around. Also, bongos are still damager on her back, which I really like because I'm like, hey, it's still a bit of a skill shot. Um, and like that. Uh, Reinhardt, this one's actually like, I'm kind of not sad about this, but, uh, fucking Reinhardt in Overwatch 2 seems to be fine. Uh, he's supposed to be the closest concept to a main tank, and if players want to play that way, they shouldn't design him out. So, with me, guys, you gotta remember, I'm not there to be like, this Reinhardt player loves playing Reinhardt. We have to allow that style to play. What I'm saying is, the idea of tanking's changing, but I believe there should still be some... There should still be some players that want to play a little bit towards the main tank concept, right? Overwatch is about accessibility, and it's reaching out to the MOBA and the um, MMO people. That's literally what they mean by the world needs more heroes, is fucking, we need more players. Get in here. Oh, you have weird skills? We need more heroes. And they're like, oh, and there's scientists and all these other people. Like, they're... Blizzard marketing was spot on. They're literally saying, hey, you're good with abilities, but not with mechanics. Get over here. You're, you're our scientist type. You know, whatever you want to call it. So Reinhardt is definitely this heavy ability, heavy main tank type design. And we don't want it to be like the main tank we saw in the past, but we want it our new version of main tank, the hardest version of that. Uh, and I think Overwatch 2 does a damn fine job at it right now. Um, the one thing I would change, Fire Strike turns into explosion damage, which means it does the healing reduction. Uh, with Lemon Kiwi, she made this change, and, and I was grinning ear to ear when I read it, because I was like, I was like, Lemon Kiwi, I don't like your, I, I don't like making the game more like a MOBA. I understand the idea you went with. You executed that, I think, perfectly, or, or near perfectly. She did a good job at it, I'll say. But when she said, Fire Strike should reduce healing, and I was like, funny fucking story. I wish I put this out beforehand because I was like, that's exactly what I would do. Uh, and Lucas says, it's the same logic, but you wouldn't remove Mercy even if the play style is an outlier. Correct. Um, we as, as Overwatch, we want to allow all people to play whatever way they want to, um, play style wise. And if there are players who are like, I can't, I have no mechanical ability, please help. They pick Mercy and support. It allows them to have impact without mechanical skill. 
Um, a lot of people get upset that you know something's not super skill based, but fuck them. Like it's not a, it's not about being skill based or not. It's about accessibility. Now I did say this in my previous video. All stuns are removed from the game. With Reinhardt, he is the exception, and. Weird topic shift, but Blizzard didn't care about Dota, and I believe it was actually um, whoever the head douchebag is. I forget his name. Uh, King Douchebag, we'll call him. He said Dota was too complicated. There's no money in it. Which, MOBAs are really complicated games if you think about it. You look at all their games out there. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty fucking complicated. But people love the complexity of it. People love these small little interactions that you have to know because it just gives people this feeling like, oh yeah, you didn't know that? Sorry, that's just that's how the game works. But the more you play, the more you learn these weird interactions. And new players are like, it's stupid. I have to learn 500 different interactions just to play Dota. And everyone's like, yeah. And they're like, this game's stupid. It's complex. I'm not playing it. But what happened was, is everyone's like, oh, okay. And they learn these small little interactions. And they use these little interactions as... Ways to win a game. And they feel pride by knowing these minute details. Um, so the idea that we say, no, there are no stuns. Oh, but there's an exception. One, it makes the heel hero himself feel more unique. Right? If there's a hero out there and we're like, hey, no heroes can look up. And there's one hero that looks up. You're like, oh shit, that hero plays a lot different. So, Charge still stuns, his alt still stuns, Reinhardt can still stun things. It makes him feel unique, makes him feel cool. On to Mr. Hog. They call him Mr. Pig. Uh, again, Hog... He's an analog bu bully. A physical bully. Or D uh, Devo is a digital bully. Hog's physical. So this is what I want with Hog. His ammo amount goes up to 6. Currently it's 5. Now, right now, his primary and secondary fire are identical. It just goes 10 meters and then explodes. This is a really simple idea and it works really well. I think it's cool. But again, I'm... I'm not above making things a little more complex to make things better balanced. We need more balancing points in Overwatch overall, and this is just one of the microcosms of Overwatch where, like Genji, where we're like, oh, there's two attacks used differently, but they, they operate almost the same. We should separate them out and allow the heroes to deal with two different situations uh, in a more effective manner rather than just giving it a little bit of a change. So I want... Ammo go up to 6. Primary fire does 180 damage, uses 2 ammo. Secondary fire basically operates just as is now. So his 10 range, uh, his 10 meter distance doesn't change. Everything like that stays the same. He actually gains an extra shot, so technically it's a buff. Um, but his primary fire fucking levels people. People are like, he's going to destroy tanks. Yes, he's supposed to. Um... He doesn't have much else going. He can't really, quote-unquote, tank for the team. I, I, He needs this. And I think this would make it more unique and make him feel a little bit stronger and make his gun feel a lot more impactful. Um, secondly, one of the things I, I, I like about Hog, I see him as a doorman or a bouncer. I don't want heroes to be able to go through Hog. Dash, Blink, uh, Diva's Boost, all this stuff, I don't want it to be able to get past Hog. Hog is the guy that fits it, like he's analog, right? So he's supposed to be physical, and he's supposed to be there to stop. So I, I just want him to stop anyone going through him. So if Dash, Genji tries to dash through him, Hits them, it'll deal the 50 damage, but then stops. 
Um, he'll also bl block line of sight for abilities. I, I don't see like there's anything wrong with that one. Uh, Jihad says, what about for other tanks for that? You'd like that idea? Should other tanks have that idea? Um, again, I, I want heroes to feel pretty unique. I want there to be more differences with them. I don't know if I want every tank to have this because tanks with mobility I don't know. Tanks with mobility are already a bit of an issue and if they can block these things. I mean I guess it only My genius oh. is finally recognized. Stay maybe too, look at me. I got a I got a gangly cyst just like you. I was using the um you should, you should catch up the games I was playing. I was using my super advantage uh, to move, and I was using the mouse to aim. And I had to use binds of my mouse to use abilities, so maybe you'll get a fucking kick out of it. Did I get it drained? No. People say American healthcare is the best. Well, actually, no one says that. But they're like, oh, you can see a doctor right away. It's going to be like three weeks for, for me. So, no. For me to see a, a risk specialist... I'm going to be like this for a little bit. Um, so, I mean, you could give this passive to all tanks. I, I would rather not because I would just like... I would like Hog to feel special in, in some certain ways. I, a lot of, of my design philosophy is not just like... I do like to make things simple and efficient, but I need things to feel different. I, I despise... I utterly fucking despise the old D&D &D way of making things different. Oh, you got a dagger? It does two damage every 0.5 seconds. Oh, you got a sword? That does four damage every one second. You got a, you got a great axe? You do eight damage every two seconds. You know what I mean? Like, it's the same shit, just numbers are fudged. Uh, I can't stand that type of design. So I want someone to see a hero and just being like, okay, I have to play differently. This a lot changes. Uh, much like it does in a, uh, actually say a MOBA, right? You you have heroes that are completely different, just operate completely different mechanics, and that that's good. That at least I think that's good. Now for the, I I I hesitate to actually make this change and even talk about it, but. Uh, hooks on a six second cooldown, but it can be meleeed in the air to stop it. Uh, can't be removed once it like it hits you. But if it's in the air, you can melee it to, to stop it. That being said, Hog can now shoot while throwing the hook. Also, hook no longer stuns, so people can fight while they're getting pulled in. Uh, this would make it feel a little bit less helpless, especially when hook's going to be so strong. But when you land hook, they're kind of fucked. Because when you land a hook, you can easily land a right click. And as soon as they get right next to you, you immediately land a left. Right? Because you can shoot while you're pulling them in. Uh, essentially, it it makes hog insanely lethal. But it gives you a bit of counterplay because you can actually deal with the hook through some other means. Uh, it really lends itself, and people may hate this, to flanking hog right you can't if you can't see the hook being thrown you can't block it uh and that's all i would actually change for hog i i hog again if we're taking our analogy you have what we know is main tank what we know is off tank or if we say tank to damage or tank to brawler whatever you want to call it hog is as far right as you can the only hero that's all, like as far right as Hog is D.Va, and that's just a little less far right. But I think everything else for him works. This this would allow him to create space. You're going to fear the shit out of this hero. And if you try to get into his face, he's going to fuck you up with his primary. <laughs> Next, I want to look at Sigma. Sigma balls. Oh, got him. Um, overall, and this is actually my note for him, I was like, he's mostly fine in his Overwatch 2 form. Uh, the only change would be to his primary to leverage the new explosion damage type. 
Sigma is... Is he the latest tank before I fucking lie through my teeth? Yeah, he is. Hammond came up before. Um, everyone saw this. Everyone's been talking about it. As Overwatch hero design has gone on throughout the times, things have become big generalists. Which means Sigma is already really good between a brawler and a main tank. Like he's for single tanks, Sigma's I, he's almost perfect where he's at. Uh, but I would do this is minus ten degrees on both sides of his absorb. So his absorb is like again one thirty five. All of these abilities that block in front of you, I don't want them blocking one thirty five degrees. Like it should be ninety. Um, it should be a very finite, and you should you should actually have to turn and look at what you're absorbing. You shouldn't just do something and then no damage. Um, his primary attack gets changed a lot, I would say. Uh, 75 direct damage, 5 to 10 splash, AoE from 3 to 4 meters. Uh, the splash damage is now considered explosion type, so it does the, um, the healing debuff. And then max range gets lowered from 22 to 20. Essentially, I want... Right now, Sigma actually does a significant amount of splash damage. I want to get rid of that. Uh, splash damage should just be there to chip, like, very, very minutely chip. Not chip now, where it reduces half of your health. Chip as in, like, it does 10 damage. 10, 20 damage. But much larger AoE, and applies a debuff. Um, and this would kind of set him up pretty, pretty well for Overwatch 2. Uh, Winston... And as for, like, Sigma, like, his... I guess I didn't do this for, for the other heroes, but... Uh, Reinhardt, we talked about him. <laughs> He's just the heaviest form of main tank. His low-range abilities, obviously, is good at, at short range. Mid to long range, he has his shield. Uh, that's how he kind of deals with those those ranges and allows his team to move forward. He doesn't have as much control or damage, if you will, at that mid to long range, but he does have just the most solid, like solid form of damage mitigation. Hog, long range, he's not fucked, but he doesn't have much. He just gets shot. That's what he can do. And he can heal through it. Mid and short range, the guy's great. He, de he deals with that range with damage. Sigma, I really can't put like my finger on his theme. But it really does seem like it's the middle ground. Uh, because that's what his shield is. It's like, oh, do you deploy a shield? Do you recall? Like, does it is it always out there? It's a little bit of both, right? It's the middle ground. He can actually deploy a shield, but at a distance, and then he can keep it up and put it away as much as he wants. Um, the amount of health it has is also in the middle. Uh, his attacks, they deal a bit damage. He can't kill someone instantly, even with rock. Um, he almost does, but his attacks don't go too far. But they don't, they don't go nowhere. I mean... 22 meters is pretty good. Everything about him is just kind of in the middle. But he has some fun abilities. He has some cool design features. But as for a theme, like it's really hard to actually pick one thing exact. Um, as for Winston, again, uh, I think Winston in his Overwatch 2 form is pretty good. Giving him a ranged attack... Uh, basically allows for him to do something with heroes that have increased uh, movement speed, the DPS heroes, so he doesn't have to like chase someone down. He can actually like hit him a little bit. And also well-timed abilities, he can massively increase his burst damage, right? If he comes in with a range attack, lands on you, and then starts using his mouse one, it's great. Uh, so he's 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 there. Um, what do I say? Winston is over at was pretty good. He's one of the heroes who keeps transformation. Oh yeah, so also... With my first video, I said there's no transformation abilities ever. So if you get broke or break, which applies a micro stun, it doesn't stun you, but it stops any channeling. Everyone in the game stops their abilities. So Genji, Soldier, everything gets stopped. 
Uh, Winston, again, is the exception for this. I've talked about exceptions before. Uh, his ultimate will stay as a transformation. Uh, the only thing we're going to really do to him is nerf his shield size. Mm -hmm. And by nerf, I mean increase. It. So right now, Winston doesn't have to make that hard of a decision when he leaps in on someone. He can retreat and keep damaging you almost the entire way. Uh, but if you made the bubble bigger, then all of a sudden, as he lands, he has to make an immediate decision. Do I stay on this guy and damage him? Try to kill him? Or do I immediately get the fuck out of there? But because he has to run farther away to get to the edge of that shield to be safe, he's going to be taking a little bit more damage. So, it just makes it a little bit more risky to uh, to just jump on, on anyone. Which is what I want. I, I don't want Leap to be a free attack on anyone. Uh, I don't like the idea that this tank has the freedom to do whatever the fuck he wants. Um, I think if he leaps and he leaps into a bad situation, he should be instantly killed. With no chance of playing a shield game. Just outright dead. Um, but that's how I feel a lot of, about a lot... Uh, that's how I feel about a lot of ability-based heroes. If you're going to need less mechanical skill in a first-person shooter, and you're saying, oh, my abilities will deal with that, in my mind, I, I'm, I'm fine with that. But if you misuse these abilities at all, you're fucking dead. You shouldn't have the leniency that a mechanical hero has to execute on, but with abilities. I, I don't like that. Um, that is my own biasness coming out uh, as an FPS player for life, like, so yeah, oh yeah. So he is, he's the exception. Thirty uh, shield size increased by thirty percent. Funny thing, Hammond. Hammond's also good. We really don't have to rework too many here tanks in this game. Uh, but Hammond, there's one thing that pisses me off about Hammond: invincibility on his mines. When he first alts, you can't destroy him until they basically touch the ground. I'll say it, and it may sound a lot biased, but if Junkrat throws a concussive mine above Hammond and Hammond alts and Junkrat detonates, all those mines should be de destroyed instantly. I don't like ultimates. I won't go too far to make them worthless, but I'm not a fan of making them stronger, and if there's any minor things we can make them weaker, I'm all for it. Um... So no invincibility on his mines. Make his model size a little bit smaller. Uh, Slam no longer brings players towards Hammond, only straight up. So right now, just like with um, Uppercut from Doom, Hammond's Slam forces you to go closer to him. Uh, I don't want that. I just want it to hit you straight up. And also you maintain full air control the whole time. Uh, and Slam damage is reduced from 20 to 100 to 20 to 50. It's... I thought about, like, what makes Hammond incredibly strong is, and he, this is the trick behind balancing, is you don't want to get rid of all their strengths. So, to me, the main purpose of Slam is its AoE. It's its large AoE disruption ability. So I was like, as much as I want to nerf the range on it, I think the range is fine for disrupting teams. But it's just the amount of damage it does that he can basically squish heroes. Um, I don't want him to have the ability to like immediately burst down a support. Uh, I, I want everyone to have a little bit more of a fighting chance against these dive tanks. Uh, which is basically why D.Va got a little bit weaker with her misses going forward instead of that. Um, but that's where I see Hammond playing out. With his model size down... A little bit harder to hit. Uh, players maintaining control is going to make it a little bit harder, but with good FPS fundamentals, you're still going to be able to deal damage and kill people. Um, and slam damage is just because it's incredibly strong. These are my notes. Sometimes I write these notes and like I haven't reread these notes. I hope I like I say something correct. Uh, Hammond is mostly there. Slam is a little too strong, but I'd rather nerf the damage, allow players to make up for it with FPS mechanic rather than nerf the radius and allow heroes to die instantly. That's correct. 
To the same effect, we didn't change his gun damage to allow players to move in the air. Strong FPS skills will negate this change. The idea is to give everyone a fighting chance with or without movement abilities against the combo. Pass Pro was smart. Uh, Zarya? First of all, Zarya is in a weird spot, but she does need some love. Um, I wanted to get 50 armor on top of everything. And all her attacks, including alt, are now considered plasma, which means they can't be eaten or deflected. There's a couple reasons for this. The right click isn't that big of a deal that it can't be absorbed or, or deflected. But the ultimate is. Uh, and I, the thing is, is that Zarya does have an issue charging her ult, and I know it's one of the strongest ults in the game, but at the same time, I want it to be a little bit more consistent, and I think it's I think it's too easy to deflect or eat. Uh, much like May's ult, it's just really easy to read, it's a slow ult, it takes a lot of time to actually go to where it needs to to activate. Her secondary attack is then is going to start leveraging the explosion feature. So it deals significantly less damage, but the AoE goes up by a significant amount. And it's considered explosion damage, so it deals a large AoE of anti-heal. Uh, yeah, the damage, basically, it's, it's very common to see in my patch notes that when things go up in AoE, they do a, a less damage, and they're there just to leverage the debuff. Now, with her bubble, it's essentially the exact opposite direction that Blizzard took it. Uh, so, for those that don't know, in Overwatch 2, at least with the details we release now, Zarya has two bubbles, and they're on the same cooldown. She can use two of them for herself or for any, or for allies. doesn't matter. It's just all the same pool. Um, but she gets two at once. The problem I have with that is that Zarya becomes this, and I know people are like, oh, but it's a trade-off. She may not be able to bubble her allies. But she can bubble herself twice, essentially be immune from damage for four seconds. With her, if she's high charge, she's going to fuck people up instantly. Like, and there's nothing they can do about it. They just die. I don't like that idea. So what I want with her bubbles... Her bubbles stay the same as they are now. Ally bubble is minus three seconds. Okay, yeah, this is what I said. So, her current bubble, like her self bubble, stays the same. Actually, I should say it, it should be down two seconds. Um, the ally bubble is down three seconds. I say two charges. I guess you could keep it like it is. I guess I was flip-flopping on design. Essentially, if you keep it like Overwatch 2, where she has a bubble pool, she has two charges. If she uses it on an ally, it comes back three seconds quicker. <laughs> if she uses it on herself, there's no reduction in, in duration um but the they block 100 hp and they only last one second so that's the bubble staffs are uh, cut in half but the max charge per bubble goes up to 50 this means a single projectile junkrat Farah, gives her 50 charge uh she's going to be high charge a lot more often and i want that but I want her decay to be twice as bad, if not more. The idea is is that I want Zarya to be a churn and burn type hero with her bubbles. I want them to block less, but I want them to be available more so that she can kind of like do timing things. Uh, much like with Demon's Defense Matrix change, where I lowered the cooldown, uh, but lowered their duration immensely so it's more of a skill shot. That's what I want with her bubbles. I want her bubbles to be more of a skill shot than anything else. She gets rewarded massively for it, but then she loses that decay, or she loses that charge much, much faster. So if there's a Zarya between fights, let's say they, they cleared your team and they win, the next time you engage Zarya, she's going to be at zero energy. Uh, but I just want her to be more active. I want her to be like, oh, I got charged, let me do something with this. Oh, I don't, you know, I have charge, I can't do something with it, I guess I lose it all, but I can build it back really fast. Uh, I, I just I want her her turnover on abilities and everything else to be much much quicker. 
Also, I just did this. I, don't ask me why. Uh, I want her to have a heavy lifting passive. I want her melee attacks to knock people back 3 meters. And I want the damage increased of her melee attacks up to 50. In fact, we'll just say double the 60. Why? I don't know. I think it's because as a tank, I, I, I want them to create space. And if she's at low charge and people aren't respecting her, and someone's diving her supports, maybe if she's like really close to him body blocking for him, just fucking melee them and push their ass back. I like it because it fits the lore of her. Um, I, I don't actually have a really good explanation. I just think it would be neat. That's really it. And maybe in some situations it's going to be the Junkrat curse where you put something in the air and it's a McCree with high noon and he kills everyone. Um, she may hit people and they just go up to a high ground, but I like, I, I just like the idea that she can fucking push people back. That someone gets in her face and she's like, fuck off. And she just throws them right back. Let's see if Pass Pro was correct in his notes. I want Zarya to be more about timing. It's timing with her shields and with her charge. It should be a short turn and burn. She maintains the longest range explosion damage for tanks. So she provides extra utility even if the damage is low. She should be at a high charge more often if played correctly to make up for the loss in damage from the secondary. Yeah. So, Pass Crow was correct. Um, so that's it for the tanks. Does anyone have any questions or comments? I, I want to stream for like maybe a half hour more and I think I can get through the support heroes. She big strong like Tams, yeah. Yeah, like I really have no I think I had some idea for it, but I couldn't I don't know. I mean it would be funny to to melee someone up in the air, hit them with the secondary so they actually get juggled. But, yeah. Just something I wanted. 